Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome you back to the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2021. Thank you all so much for coming back every day on this project. I appreciate it so very much. Our tangle for today is a lovely ribbon tangle called Rega. It is by a Dutch CZT named Anuska Vardenberg, I think is the way you say that. And it is lovely. So uh, let's get started. So for today, I'm going to be using a Renaissance tile from Zentangle. It is three and a half inches by three and a half inches or nine by nine centimeters. I'm also using a Pigma Micron 01 in brown, a Micron PN in black, a um, charcoal pencil, a pastel charcoal pencil. Here we go. Uh, by Generals, and I'm going to be using, at least I think, I'm going to be using the Burnt Sienna and uh, my white charcoal and my regular F pencil. All right, before this all comes crashing down, let's get started. I'm going to try drawing my string today in this charcoal pencil and see how this goes for me. Um, Anuska had a lovely string that she used on her uh, pattern art. Uh, for tangle patterns and so she basically did um, these ribbon pattern or these ribbon stripes uh, starting smaller in the corner and sort of getting larger the further she goes out and then she had two of these and uh, I sort of put this one in the middle uh, which I didn't really intend to do, but I can fit another one in over here if I want, or maybe a short one over here. Let's see what happens up here. Something like that? Yeah, that'll work for sure. And then um, she had what I loved, which was kind of a, uh, a throwback to what we did in the live stream if if you managed to get through it yesterday and uh, it was basically just a frame drawn on the inside or a little uh, yeah frame line that's sort of drawn on the inside I don't think we're gonna be able to see more than that and I think that'll go down there and this will go like this yeah so we've sort of got a little picture a little picture within with uh, these ribbons going over it okay hopefully you can see this well enough I may have gotten this a little too far over that's all right okay so like this and is this gonna show maybe a little bit right here all right, so I haven't decided what I want to do in the background on her art. She did a tipple, which was done lovely. Uh, it was a lovely addition to this. But, of course, uh, our, our point is to highlight the pattern, and it is a beautiful pattern. So uh, I think I'm going to draw with my black PN. Am I going to regret this? It's really lovely in brown, too, and so I'm trying to decide... And I guess it just makes more sense to put the black on top. However, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. No, I definitely want it in brown. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm back to my brown zero one. And I may pull out, in fact, for part of this, my brown 05. I think I've got this uh, somewhere here. I do. So I'll keep that in reserve in case I want to um, bulk up these outer lines here. Okay, and I'm going to go from one, one edge to the other and just go right on off. And then I'm going to aura that and try to keep it nice and neat and thin. 
This is something that, that I struggle with. So I will be taking my time. And you will see me leave these little white gaps because I understand up front that I am not good at matching my ink lines if I lift my pen. So it's best for me to just leave a little gap and keep going, yeah? Okay, so now I'm gonna come back down I don't know where I'm going with that. Come on, Cindy, stay on track. <clears throat> and now let's aura that. Taking my time. Ooh, I was on a good run there. Oh, I love Renaissance tiles. They are so gorgeous to work on. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw the outer edges of this ribbon over here as well. That will also go from edge to edge. Slow down, Cindy. All right, so that's not a bad start. Okay, now for the pattern, we're going to make some divisions along this ribbon line and we're going to make them using an S stroke. And it's, it's as I have discovered by, while drawing this pattern, it's kind of important that you make some nice strokes here. Otherwise you have some, some weird looking stuff. So um, try to watch for a minute and I'm not promising all mines are gonna be all mines. <laughs> all mine will be nice, but um, <laughs> But um, at least take a look and see what I'm doing before you get started, okay? So an S curve uh, taking off from one edge and landing on the other, and you don't want too much curve, okay? And then you're going to echo that. And I can tell you that I put too much curve in this for my happiness. So I'm gonna try it again. Just a slight S curve. That's a little bit better. This is what we're looking for. That was probably a little too curvy. Now when you're Aura-ing this, you're gonna wanna go ahead and leave a, not a huge area, but a decent amount of space there because it's going to, to make the pattern more visible in the end. So the one I just did over here is a little too thin, I think. Although Anuska in hers um, on the step out is, has uh, lovely, lovely thinner ones that work for her. So um, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. This is one I've had to practice 
and uh, I'll let you in on a secret. This is my third time to record this video uh, because I could not get out of the ugly stage with the last two. And so uh, we're going to try this one more time here. Otherwise, yeah. It is not that the pattern is is not beautiful, and it's not that it's difficult particularly, because it isn't. But um, it's, it's very delicate and elegant. And if you're not careful, it gets overwhelmed by the other stuff that's going on. We'll just say that. See how we do. Okay, now we're gonna add some little echo lines that are gonna come out from these curves, okay? And the way that you know that you're pointing them the right direction is by following the curve. So um, right here, going up, we're gonna follow this curve right here and make some really pretty little echo lines that go down there, right? Just like that. And they're gonna follow this natural curve right here, which is why we didn't want it to be too funky. Same thing here, follow the curve. Take your time, really do a nice, lovely job. And so this is what we have, okay? Keep going. Take your time. Do a nice, careful job. Remember, you want that nice S curve going both directions. You don't want to go too crazy, but you also um, <clears throat> don't want to be too timid. I don't know if that helps anybody. Probably not. Okay. Usually three strokes is enough. You might need an extra one or one less. Just depends on how close you've got them to each other. Oops. You don't want to do that. You want that nice curve that flows straight from there. You don't want to start going off on your own. Follow that curve. And so what you're getting in the interstices here is this lovely little um, is this lovely little shape? This little I don't know what that shape is. Somebody tell me what that shape is. It's very pretty. Follow the curve. You want that curve to be lovely and pleasing. Okay, we're gonna follow this one. Sometimes you have to teach them what a curve is. And just do your best. Okay, and we're just gonna hint at that one. And then this one will have some that are coming over like this. And we'll just hint at those. There, very nice. All right, let's see if we can do some down here that are equally decent. Remember, S curve. S curve. Okay, we stretched that one a little bit. Doesn't matter, it's perfect the way it is. Just follow the curve. This can be a little difficult to get the hang of, but don't worry, you can practice it in your sketch pads or scratch paper or whatever you have to use. 
We do not believe in snobbery here. If you don't have Zentangle tiles, I do not care. Use what you have. Use your box backs. Use whatever tools that you have available. Use your copy paper if that's what you have. There is nothing wrong with that. The joy of Zentangle visits you no matter what kind of paper you use. I am here to tell you I have used it all. I have used the cheapest copy paper. It doesn't matter. You can still draw on it. It still works. Use what you've got, guys. It is so important to just keep drawing. It is more important than the supplies you have. It is more important than anything else. Keep drawing. Now, in these tiny ones like this, you really got to work to get this in. But uh, you're going to have a really cool effect, I think, when we're done. I hope. I really hope we don't get stuck in the ugly stage on this one. Now, the pleasing S-curve here is kind of hard to find. We're not going to stress about it. We're just going to keep going. Just keep swimming. I know. All you got to do is swim. All right. So now let's do the next one. What do you think of this? It's very pretty, isn't it? Especially on the tan background with the brown pen. It's very elegant. The curves. I love it. I love it. All right, so let's do some more of these pleasing S curves here, please, Cindy. Not too curvy. Not too curvy, Cindy. That is the exact opposite of what I told you to draw, young lady. And that's also not the best example. All right, let's see if we can salvage this. Mm, bit better, not really. Now we've got to pretend. <laughs> Let's see if I'm any better at pretending. So, uh, not much. Well, that was disappointing. Let's see if we can do a better one over here. Truly disappointing. All right. Well, <laughs> we're going to see what happens. You poor guys. Poor guys. All right. I'm going to start over here. And not going to worry about that curve. And then I'm going to start over here and do worry about that curve. Like that, you want that beautiful curve. Curve that S out. There you go. Same here. Slow down, Cindy. Not my best work, <clears throat> but sufficient, sufficient. I am going to let go of my perfectionism for a few minutes today and try to accept whatever outcome happens with this pattern as I refuse to do it again. It isn't that I'm not doing the pattern correctly, it's that I'm not liking the way it looks when I'm finished and I need to get over it. And I may be missing something. I may be missing um, some important perspective that I'm not seeing because I've been close up with it. I don't know. Okay, so uh, again, I need to not prejudge my outcome. Try 
try not to do that so much. Oh, the dogs are about to play. Guys, I'm almost done. Come on. All right. They already missed Mari. Oh, did they go outside? Score. <laughs> Yay me. Somebody did something right today. I'm sure it wasn't me, but we're going to take the benefits of that and go with it. All right, so let's bring this down. Now, for me, um, because of the way that I'm drawing these, these are really overlapping quite a bit as far as, not really overlapping, but bumping up against each other a lot. And I think that's fine. Um, we're going to get an interesting result. Okay. And that'll be that. And we'll start this. and leave that. Okay. So I do like this. Now my experience the last two times tells me to be careful how I, how I tread from this point on. Um, let me show you the tile that I did previous to this one. Now, there's nothing really truly wrong with this at all, but I felt like I lost the beauty of the pattern. Now, this, this row isn't bad at all, but this one I tried something different, and I sort of lost the pattern, and then I was re-emphasizing my central shapes, and then I was getting confused with my background shapes and my central shapes, and and uh, so then I added the color to sort of, and then even then I was like, eh. So I wanted another shot at it, and I thought maybe a Renaissance tile would help. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So I think, um, for me, this is going to help. So I'm just going to take my charcoal pencil and stroke a little bit of white on these sort of S uh, shapes that are in the center. For one thing, it's going to highlight them and make them look cool. And for another, it will help me keep uh, my shading where it needs to be when I get started. Just like this. And just like that, we have brought out uh, the center uh, element of the pattern just by using a lighter color than the background. This is one of the reasons I love wor working on colored tiles because it gives you an extra dimension for shading and highlighting. Now that said, if you can if you can find that that uh, same dynamic stuff in your black and white art, then you have really accomplished something. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing up here. Again, I just think this is going to make the shading easier. So that's the central element in our in our pattern, okay? So, and I really like the way that this has turned out as far as the dimensionality. So I'm going to take my graphite pencil. Do I really want to? Yeah, I really, I really do. So I could use a darker brown here, but I think even if I decide to go for a darker brown, I'm still going to want graphite underneath it. Uh, I think making this area really nice and dark is going to be uh, an important part of this. And of course, I have my mono zero available if I get out of the lines too much. Sometimes it's hard not to do once you start blending. 
I love using Renaissance colors, the browns and the blacks and the grays and the whites and all of that. Uh, it always comes together so nicely. It's such a pleasure. But you know what? Those box backs work just as good for getting, for getting a startling good result. And sometimes uh, their color is richer than the Renaissance styles because they're pretty uh, sort of brown neutral. They're pretty tan as far as uh, there's not much red. There's not much, you know, it's pretty neutral tan. Uh, it doesn't lean towards one, one end of the color spectrum or another. And so that makes it easy um, to sort of um, send the direction you want to palette-wise. Okay, down here. And by adding color here, you can also uh, cover many up many of your uh, line snafus if you have them in that area. I frequently get my lines um, sort of out of whack in that area, and so a nice shading job can cover a multitude of ills. Of course, my shading my shading jobs can cover a multitude of ills. Y'all's are probably not so multitudinous. But if they are, then you're then you're all covered, aren't you? To my older viewers, keep after it, guys. You can do this too. There is no age limit, either young or old, on this channel. You can do it if you're a kid. You can do it if you're old. You can do whatever you want. See, that's my message to everyone. Do what you want. No, that's actually not my message to everyone. Don't do what you want. Do what's right. We, won't, we, sh we don't need any more shenanigans going on in this world. That has been done to death. I'm, I'm tired of the shenanigans. Everybody just needs to act right. That's my message for you today. Is this the same tortillon? No. All right. Now let's blend. I will tell you now I'm going to want more of this, but I probably will use that Van Dyke Brown in the chalk pencils because that's a nice dark uh, brown color and it blends well with the graphite as far as the, the shadowy gray parts of it. Now you don't wanna bring the color down, the shading down too far because you will miss an opportunity to use a highlight um, in this area right here. If that makes sense. We'll do that here in a moment. Be thinking while you're working here about what pattern you wanna put down in here. We'll have a little bit of room to play around in there. So be thinking about what you might wanna use in there. Anything organic or um, or um, any of the ones we usually do. Uh, poke leaf, poke root, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anything, any fill, tipple like uh, Nusko used uh, is, is a good one for this. Um, you want something that will not overwhelm what's on top, right? So um, something not too wild and crazy, but um, you know, you can still make it something cool. No, nothing wrong with that. And we've done some great fill patterns this year already in the last month. I have been, I don't even know if I should say this out loud, but I have been thinking that this should be the year of Zentangle. I, I reserve the right to take a day off here and there or two but not a month. I think we should keep going when we're done. What do you think? I know what most of you are gonna say. Marilyn, I already know what you think. <laughs> you are the sweetest thing. I love you too, just saying. 
I already know what Marilyn thinks. She thinks, yes, 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 do it. So I think we should. We'll just see how long Cindy lasts. Can we do a year? I don't know. I honestly don't know if I can handle it. I'm going to need a day off every now and then. Maybe the weekend. It's worth exploring, though. It's not like I'm doing anything better right now. All right. Now... This is where we're at after our first round of shading, okay? So before I go much further with this, I want to decide what I'm going to do back here. And I'm already trying to decide uh, what um, color I want to use back there. Now, if I'm going to do the Renaissance thing, I should use black uh, in the background, but I'm not sure. Where is that 05 in brown? Let me... Let me re-emphasize my line here. There it is. My outer edges. See if I can do a decent job on that. And then maybe I won't feel so uh, paranoid about adding black, which is a much stronger color in the background of something that is brown. Okay, this is a 05 in brown. The brown on the 05s and in the PNs tends to be darker, a darker brown than, than the ones on the 01s. So just be aware, be aware of that. And you can do this with your 01. Well, you can. I probably can't because I make a big mess. You remember all those little white gaps I left? You see? All gone. And if you're wiggly, your edges are deckled. That's a beautiful thing. Go for it. All right. So, I don't know where that hair is coming from. Me, clearly. All right, let's do these. Nice. Okay, I feel better about putting something in the background, I think, now. Now that we've gotten this, uh, the edges on this strengthened a little bit. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> excuse me. For the background, I think I will use, um, I think I will use black. Question is, should I use a pen? Because that's a lot of black. Let's try it. Okay, so what pattern am I going to use back here? I'm kind of thinking about bales, which is just a, done on a square grid. It's very simple. It's hard to get wrong, which is one reason I choose it. So I'm going to... And for once, I'm going to make my bales fairly straight. No wonky grid. No craziness. Let's see. Nope, but this one should go through. All right. The more careful with this stuff you are, the better off you are in the end. Okay. Um... Hmm. Let's go for this. That looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> um. Okay. 
and that's pretty close. That's pretty close. Hopefully that's close too. All right, let's square this off. See how we do. This makes me paranoid. This is something I'm not good at, this whole squaring off thing. Especially when you're skipping areas. <laughs> but I can do this and so can you. And if it's not perfect, what? Doesn't matter, doesn't have to be perfect. Right, Cindy? Right, Cindy. And just like that, I'm done, see? No worries. And now we're just going to add these rice shapes to each side. You coming back up, Simba? Come on. Come on. Up. Okay, but no squirrel chasing. All right, man. Good job. Okay, and we're just going to fill these in everywhere. It's nice skinny rice shapes. Or if you want them fat and puffy. We've done bales before, haven't we? It's a very nice, it's a very nice grid pattern. Frequently has lovely results. Slow down, Cindy. Moving too fast. We don't want to feel groovy right now. Well, we do want to feel groovy, but... We don't want our lines to be groovy. How about that? Okay, Simba, are we done? He goes, feeling groovy, Mom. Oops, Cindy. That went in there. You, you saw it here first. Fun, yeah, now I'm singing Simon and Garfunkel in my head. Thanks for putting the thanks for posting the lyrics, guys. Two of you did that. Smart, smart. All right. You can leave these edges straight if you want to not put this on the outside. You don't have to, but I like it. So I'm going to put it. Okay, and now we turn our tile and go back the other way. Well, I'm not promising they're not going to continue to growl and be silly. I don't know if there's a cat or a dog or what is out there. But they are very, very head up about it. I have to say I've done a very nice job with my bales. Nice and neat. That's what happens when you take your time, Cindy. Okay, I won't. I won't sing, but now it's in my head. And hopefully now it's in all of y'all's heads. And we're feeling groovy together. It's Friday night. I'm about to go, go break out my bottle of wine. <laughs> Did 
Now, what do I want to do with my bales is the question. Do I want to put something in here? Most assuredly do, but what? I could put well in here. That What a good idea. I think I want to do that. You guys remember well? Well. this and this is why you don't need a thousand tangles guys you only need a few because the possibilities with them are literally endless endless Endless, I'd say. Okay. Got a little crazy on that one. Here we go. And look at the lovely meta pattern we've created here too. Now I have done my well in the same direction in each square, but you certainly may change that up and your meta pattern will also change if you do that. Isn't this pretty? I'm glad I thought of well. Well is an awesome pattern. It, it does so many cool things. Some fun feeling groovy. Yep, feeling groovy. <laughs> I really enjoyed having Mari on with me, but I tell you what, he sucks the energy right. <laughs> out of me oh my goodness he wears me out with that i don't know how he's yeah i know i'm old he's not Okay, now let's figure out what we're doing over here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a nice graphite um, edge around here and really darken the color. Right here next to these ribbons. And I'm doing it in this way so I don't get a sharp line here. And it gives me maximum uh, color when I do it this way. Make sure you get up next to your line. You don't have that little white streak. You probably know what I'm talking about. Oh, 
hope that you can see the shading on this somewhat. I know that the light makes it really difficult. I just haven't figured out what to do about it yet. Besides shade with color, which is always an option. And may may make a may make an appearance tonight. Goodness. All right. <clears throat> Now, I want to do the same thing over here. Again, right up to this line, but not over it if you can help it. And that's what that eraser is good for because it's so small. Don't be afraid to get nice and dark here. Because we really want some separation between these two patterns. We really want uh, these brown ones to be on top. And the only way to do that is to put a nice, good, dark shadow on there. And try really hard not to get a line, which is not so easy. I'm pulling the tooth up or if this is fuzz from my tortillon or something or that's what it is is I'm scrubbing over these ink spots guys I can't stress enough when you're when you're blending your tortillon to be really careful rubbing over any of these spots where where you have laid down ink because your tortillon will grab that and pick it right up and drag it off and then you'll have a mess. So this cautionary note that I need to pay attention to more myself. All right, I thought surely that's dry now. No, it's not. And even after, even after a day, it may not be. You know, always just use cautions using tortillons over ink. All right. So that's one start that I don't hate. And I'll probably darken that again as we go. Uh, I forgot line up here. There we go. Problem solved. And what else? So, um... I, okay, a couple of things come to mind. You can put a slight highlight right here where this curve sort of bulges out. Yeah, you still want to leave some area between the edge and that. So you just want it right here where the bulge is, but not covering a large area. It's just a hint. Right? Just a hint. Just a hint, Cindy. Okay, and then I'm going to turn that over and do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Now, adding this right here is going to make it even more essential that our shading is good right above it. 
or our pattern will get lost and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to put in some on this one too. Although I definitely have more shading to do here. So just across the apex of this curve here, where it seems to sort of bulge out a little bit. And we're gonna wanna make sure that our shading on the other side is really good as well. This will sort of accentuate the curved look. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like that. And we're gonna get crazier even, but not much. We're almost out of time. Okay. So now I'm really going to want to get after this shading but I think I'm going to try this out. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try this out and just brown this up a little bit and see what I think about this. Need a sharper point on this. I need more graphite on this to make it work, I think. Like that. Don't be afraid to put a nice dark shade on the upside of that of that inner aura either. I think that's gonna make a big difference on this too. We'll just keep accentuating that, that sort of curvy quality, I think. We're gonna try it out. This is gonna sort of, this thing that we've been highlighting, this will sort of tuck the bottom under and, and make it look uh, curved even more. And if I want to uh, bring that, that brown pencil in there, that's not going to be a problem right there. And I probably will have to add that highlight again. I wanted to illustrate that. I really do like the brown on there. We'll see how far I go with that. But something like that. And you can do the same thing with colored pencil, of course. If that's what you wanna do, you don't have to. You can just leave it shaded and it's still gonna be pretty powerful and effective, I think. So something like that, and then wanting to keep uh, that middle section clean. And then you can, at the end, then go over again with your white charcoal. Like this, and then you've got something really lovely, right? So now, as far as the background goes, if you want to spend the time, this is a big if, you can shade your well individually like this. And if you take the time, this is extremely effective. It will make your background very 3D. It will make this look folded.
since I'm going to be editing for several hours, I will probably shade this in this way. And then, of course, uh, once you blended it out, let me just show you quickly. Once again, be careful where you're rubbing, okay? Try really hard not to get those dots of ink under your tortillon. And if you do, be extremely gentle there. If you put graphite in the center here, gentle is the name of the game. Okay. And if you want to go this far, again, you can um, do several things highlighting-wise if you want. Stroke some in right along here. You can do it along here like this, which is, is what I feel is the most effective. And just really give that a little bit of a shine on top. Uh, I don't mind this one. I just don't think it's as effective as adding the shading or the highlighting right there next to the shading. And if you do that, then that gives you the opportunity to do um, to work this into your shading. Again, if that is what you want to do, that that each step that you take with shading adds an extra dimension to your art. And, and the more time you spend with it, the more dynamic this is going to be. And you can see the difference here between these spots that I've just played with a little bit with shading and these flat ones over here, right? And neither way is wrong, and there's nothing wrong with either one of those. You may choose to do yours in whatever way makes you happy. But uh, this is how I'm going to do mine. I'm going to use this brown pastel pencil, and again, you can use a colored pencil instead. And I'm just, sort of, I'm just going to go over my graphite and um, sort of brown up the dark. That's gonna make this uh, pop off. I'm gonna darken my area right here with graphite before I do this. And so, and then on the background, I am going to shade my well because I can, right? And I will probably, I will probably um, do that, of course, with graphite and white charcoal. So this is where I'm going to leave you today. We're, we're over an hour now, but I hope you have enjoyed this. And isn't this going to be fun when we get all finished with the finishing, with the finishing touches, good Cindy. <laughs> but I like it. I like this a lot. I think it's going to be really dynamic. And I hope you guys had fun learning about Rega. All right, guys, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for being with me today.